watching somebody that was probably one of the most intelligent people that I've ever met not be able to talk anymore, not be able to do basic things like feed themselves. So I think when we think about Alzheimer's and early, on, um, early onset Alzheimer's, we never think about the magnitude and the scale that it's going to end up in. So by the time that he was quite severe, I was in my mid-20s, so not that young, but still young enough that I don't think anyone should be in that position. Like, I just, I wanted my dad in full capacity that I, I knew and loved, but it wasn't possible. She had met my dad when she was in her early 20s. Um, she spent over 45 years with him and they were more than just a couple. They were best friends, they did everything together. So I think it's been a really huge adjustment for the whole family. Um, it's definitely sad to watch her without him. Um, but I think more than anything, there's just a massive hole. There's just, it's, I don't think there's a day that you realise that he's not there. more SAP exposure of the brain, whether it's over in, a, in an acute episode, like having your head cracked open, or whether it is just living for 80 or 90 years, could be associated with this damage to nerve cells that SAP can do and lead to dementia. But that's just a hypothesis and it's an association. when we put this drug into the, gets into the blood, we give it to patients, it gets into the blood, one SAP molecule binds to one end, one weight, if you like, on the, on the, on the barbells, and another one binds on the other end, and they stay stuck together, okay? And the body, in fact, the liver cells, recognise this form of SAP as abnormal. And as soon as that complex of the drug and SAP encounters a liver cell, which it does almost instantly, because all the blood in the body is flowing through the liver all the time, the liver cell removes it and destroys the SAP. For any protein to build up in the brain, a gene has to be translated into that protein by the cell machinery. And that's done by making a message from the gene and that message then being translated into the protein. Now, what we do with gene silencing is we block part of that process. So we create a synthetic nucleotide, which is basically a short piece of material that looks like the message and it binds to the message and then causes it to be destroyed so it cannot be developed into the protein. Basically, as I was talking about, we can see pathology in the brain 
way before people have symptoms, so before they ever get symptoms compared to those that don't have mutation. With mutation, with autosomal dominant Alzheimer's disease, and if you look at the brains at minor... We're actually about to start a, a trial called primary prevention in people with genetic Alzheimer's disease. They know they have a mutation, but they are 25 years or so before they're due to get symptoms. The aim is, if you can give them an anti-amyloid therapy, can you prevent the disease ever starting? And we're going to start that in the next few months, which I think is really exciting. I think it's everything. That research has the ability to change so many lives.